okay in the last few lectures we started understanding the phenomena of polarization after understanding that how polarization is done by reflection and transmission we started discussing about a very beautiful phenomena of double refraction we saw that in double refraction when an unpolarized light is being incident on an n isotropic crystal we get instead of one refracted ray two rays and these two rays are known as ordinary ray and extraordinary ray why are we calling this as ordinary ray because it follows snell's law whereas the e ray the refractive index of e ray is such that it does not follow snell's law and then we saw that o ray in order to understand about the polarization of o ray and e ray we need some reference and we require to define optic axis and principal plane of the crystal in order to understand about the polarization of these two rays we saw that how do we define optic axis it is an axis of symmetry of the crystal which passes through the blunt corners of the crystal and we also define what are blunt corners which passes through the corner where three faces meet at obtuse angles and generally we see for example in calcite crystal we have two such kind of corners so the line or the direction it is not not a line the direction which is passing through these two blunt corners we call as optic axis then we defined principal plane the plane which containing optic axis and which is normal to the opposite faces of the crystal is defined as principal plane so whenever we talk about the polarization of o ray and e ray we always talk about in terms of with reference to a principal plane so we say that o ray has perpendicular vibrations with respect to principal plane and e ray has parallel vibrations with respect to principal plane now we get from the phenomena of double refraction we get two rays one which is perpendicularly polarized and the other one which is parallelly polarized now i would like to completely polarize this beam what do you mean what do we mean by that polarized beam then when we have vibrations only in one direction so in o ray and e ray i need only one ray in order to get completely polarized light now we will see that how very beautifully by using calcite crystal we can make such a device by which we can completely polarize light and such a device is known as nicol prism now what do we do first we will try to understand the construction of nicol prism so in nicol it's a very useful polarizing device where a calcite crystal of 3 times length is taken 3 times length compared to width compared to width is taken then this calcite crystal is cut along the principal plane such that this calcite crystal is cut along the principal plane such that it makes the end angle as 68 degree and 112 with end angles of 68 degree and 112 so i get one section of calcite crystal with end angles of 68 degree and 112 then so i mark this as p q r s then this crystal calcite crystal is being cut into two equal halves along ps which is perpendicular to the to both the principal sections now this calcite crystal 
the crystal is cut along PS which is perpendicular to both the principal sections. And these two pieces are then cemented together with another material known as Canada balsam. And the two pieces are cemented together with another material known as Canada balsam. So, my Nicole prism looks like this. And it is cut from here, which is perpendicular, and this is being cemented together by another material. So, these two pieces are calcite crystals, and then this is my Canada balsam. Now, when an unpolarized light falls on this, Due to double refraction, it divides into two. One O ray and E ray. O ray has perpendicular vibrations, perpendicular to the principal plane. E ray has parallel vibrations, parallel to the principal plane. Now, why we have chosen Canada balsam? Canada balsam is a transparent material, clear transparent material whose refractive index lies between that of O-ray and E-ray, whose refractive index lies midway O-ray and E-ray. Now, how this is beneficial to us? So, what will happen? This Canada balsam has refractive index of one point. 5, 5. O ray has a refractive index of 1.658. E ray has refractive index of 1.486. Now we will use this property. This construction is known as Nicole prism. Now, when these two rays falls on the Canada balsam, then what happens that this Ray, O ray, has more refractive index as compared to the Canada balsam, whereas E ray has less refractive index compared to the Canada balsam. So now, for O ray, the ray is moving from denser to rare medium, whereas E ray is moving from rare to denser medium. Now, how we can use this property? You all know that in order to and we, we, what is our aim? Our aim is to polarize light. So we want on, out of these two rays, only one ray out of the crystal. And here we can see that, so what we have to do, we have to construct our prism in such a way that one ray is completely reflected, totally reflected. So what we are trying to do, we want O ray to completely undergo total internal reflection. So by using this Canada balsam, we can do that. Because for O ray, this Canada balsam is rarer medium. Now, when O ray it is moving from denser to rarer, and another important thing for total internal reflection to happen is that the critical angle, the ray should have more than the angle of incidence for O ray should be more than the critical angle. So we will make sure that the critical angle for O ray on the Canada balsam is around 69 degree. So, in order to achieve this critical angle, here the angle, the angle of instance outside the crystal is around 14 degree. So, if we maintain this angle, O ray will meet Canada balsam at a critical angle of 69 degree. So, when the ray has a critical angle 69 degree, more than 16 degree, and it is moving from denser to rarer, it will totally internally reflect and the E ray will pass through the crystal. 
so this is how total internal reflection will happen and o ray will be completely totally internal reflect whereas we will get only e ray this is how nicol prism used to polarize light let me mention here that the critical angle for total internal reflection internal reflection of o ray is 69 degree which corresponds to which corresponds to angle of incidence angle of incidence of 14 15 degree so which is this angle let me mark in the figure so this is my s not for example this is s this is m so s not sm this angle this is s not ms and optically canada balsam is denser for e ray and rarer for o ray so that is why o ray is moving from denser to rarer media and e ray will move from rare to denser so now when these two features are combined these two properties are satisfied o ray will undergo will undergo total internal reflection and we will get only one ray out of the prism that is e ray and the ray is polarized total internal reflection okay so this this we have seen so we saw that nicol prism so what do we uh, understand from here is that this is how nicol prism will act as a polarizer now in the next lecture we will try to see that how nicol prism can also act as an analyzer thank you